Good morning and welcome. We are now pre-recording the Shabbat, the Sabbath, the Saturday, the Shabbos portion of Noah, the seventh portion of Noah. Chapter 11 of the book of Genesis, not to be confused with the financial chapter 11. This is the Genesis chapter 11. By he and it came to pass, once upon a time, Kol Ho'ores, that the entire earth was, Sofa Echos, everyone spoke one language. There were no languages. Udvorim Achodim, there was one speech. Everybody understood everything. One language, and it wasn't English. What was the language? Rashi. Sofa Echos Loshen, or Lashon HaKodesh, the holy tongue. The world was created. In the holy tongue, everyone spoke the holy tongue. And one speech, people also were unified in their thought, in their politics. They came with one idea, the Umru, and they said, they came with one platform, and they said, not everything comes from Hashem, where he can choose for himself the heavens and rule everything. Just because he's in heaven, he can tell us what to do. We shall ascend up to heaven and wage war against him. So we're going to build a massive tower showing God that we can invade his turf. As we say in Yiddish, a skyscraper is a Volkenkratzer which means a cloud scratcher. You want to show that you can climb into the clouds, into the clouds and go into God's turf. Dabarachar, another meaning, al against the one God. Dabarachar, dvaram achodim, one speech. Omru, they said, the whole flood was a coincidence. It wasn't from God. Stuff happens. Achas the elef, the tough reish nun vav shonim. Once every thousand six hundred and fifty six years, harikia mismated the firmament, the heavens, they begin to shake, they weaken. Kishem she also be me'amabel, like happened by the flood. Therefore, what we need is we need to create support. Let's put some two by fours on the heaven. Bayuv and asel esmuchas. Let's create a support. This tower should support it, and of course. As the oral law says, this was more symbolic than practical. This was a challenge against God. We, the unified humanity, are more powerful than God. So what did they do? Verse 2, By he it came to pass, binosa mikedem, as they journeyed from the east, by imtsu bika, and they found a plain, biarat shinor, in the land of shinor, which is in the Babylon area of Ayesh Vusham, and they settled there. Menosam Mikedem, Shayyayesh Vusham, they dwell there in the east, Kedixiv Lamaila, by Hime Shavam, that their dwelling was Harakedem, the mountain of the east. Nosam Isham, they journeyed from there, Losulahem, to search out for themselves, Mokim, a new place, a development. Lahachsik is Kulam, to be able to contain everyone. They want to do set up like a new massive city, a megalopolis, in order to contain everyone. Vilei Motsu el Shinor, and what they found was Shinor. The Balaturim here says that Sofa Achas has the numerical value of Lishon HaKodesh of the Hebrew language. The holy tongue. Benosa Mikedem also means moving away from Kadmona Shal Olam, from Hashem, who is the origin of creation. Benosu Mikedem means they evolved away from God. 
Verse 3, So one said to the other, Let's go make bricks and burn them thoroughly. Let's develop bricks. Up to that point in time, there was only stone. Bricks, what's the difference between stone and bricks? Stone is made by God. Bricks are man-made. They said, who needs God? We can make our own bricks. So their brick became their stone. And slime became their mortar. So they didn't need God's mountains of stone. They had their own bricks. Ish Oriyeu, Umalu Umma, nation to nation, Mitzrayim the Kush, Mitzrayim said to Kush, and Kush Leput, and put to Canaan, these are the various sons of Chum, Hobo, Hazminu Atzkam, prepare yourself, call Hobo Loshan Azmanu, it means get ready, Shemechinim Atzmam, Umeschabim Mulacha, they prepare themselves and gather together for some kind of job, Eila Eitzo, or for an idea, Eila Masa, or a burden. Hobo Hazminu, Aprile, an old French, Levenim, why did they need bricks? What was the big deal with the bricks? What's with the bricks? She'ein avonim bebabel. Israel is plentiful when it comes to stone. But Babylon had no stone. She because it's a plain. So they had to create man-made stone. That's how you make bricks. Serfenesam, you burn them bekifshon in a furnace. That's the process. To plaster the wall. So now they had invented a new invention called bricks. Verse 4, Vayemru, so they said, now that we have bricks, let's build a city, Omigda, with a tower, ascending up into heaven. We're going to create a reputation. The whole world is going to know about us. Penopots, lest we be scattered up all over. So this will become the capital of the world. That God should not bring a plague upon us to disperse us. So God came down, descended to see the city and the tower. Asher bonu b'nei ha'odam, which the children of man constructed. Ma'yered Hashem l'reis l'hutzal ha'kach. Why does the Torah tell us that God descended? God is everywhere. God doesn't need to descend. Hashem is here. Hashem is there. Hashem is truly everywhere. Ela l'lamed l'dayonim. This is a lesson to judges of flesh and blood. Shele yashiu ha'nodan. They should not condemn the defendant the offender until they see firsthand the Yavinu and they understand. A judge has to see things firsthand. It's one of the reasons why in Halacha the members of the Sanhedrin need to be fluent in every language. They shouldn't even have to depend upon interpreters. They want to understand it and see it by themselves. The Medish Tanchuma, this comes from Medish Tanchuma, Bnei Ha'odam, sons of man. Obviously, sons of man. Ela bnei mi? Who else? Shema bnei chameidim mugmalim. Maybe they were sons of donkeys or camels. Ela, the meaning of bnei adam is bnei adam arishin, sons of the first man. Shekafar sateva, who showed a lack of appreciation for Omar, and he said, when God said, "Why did you eat from the tree of knowledge?" Ha'isha she nasato imodi. Adam said in a negative way, don't blame me, this woman that you gave to me, she made me do it. It's her fault. And in fact, Hashem gifted him with Chava. Af Elu, so also these, Kofui Bateva were also ungrateful. Limreid Bimi Shishpiam Teva to rebel against Hashem who gave them so much good. Umiltam in Amabel and saved them from the flood, and here they rebelled against Hashem. Verse 6. By Yom and Hashem, so Hashem said, Look at what's going on here. There's too much unity, and therefore from this unity descends evil and atheism. 
which means against God. And in a sense, it is said that in our days, we had a repeat of this. For those who are old enough to remember the former Soviet Union, Olav HaSholem, from today's, from then, from the then Soviet Union, today there are some 20 countries. At one time, they were all one country. We called it Russia, but it was the Soviet Union. It unified so many people, so many languages, so many time zones. And in general, the break up or breakdown of the former Soviet Union, the miracle of Shnas Nisim, of the year of miracles, 1990, 1991, Tehei Shnat Ar'enu Niflot, that's Tavshin Nun or Shnas Nisim, the break up or breakdown of the former Soviet Union was a miracle which resulted in the creation of many sub-entities removing their massive unity against God. So we have a replay of this portion, which is a, a fantastic observation. Back to the text. So Hashem said it is their unity that enabled them to do it. And now we're not going to withhold from them anything that they intended to do. We're just going to throw a monkey wrench in. One good thing they have, they are united. Unity is blessing. They have one language. And this is the thing that they began to do. They're using their unity for bad purposes. They said, I say some last claim last to begin. Hold back. So Hashem said, I will divide and conquer. Hova, let us, Rashi brings down from the oral law, that Hashem, teaching us humility, consulted with the heavenly court, with the angels. Nerda, let us go down, let us descend. Vinovla, Shom, Svosam, and let us confuse and confound their languages. Hashem miraculously imposed different languages on different people. So there was a complete, total breakdown of communication. Asher la'yishmu ish svasreyeyu, no man would comprehend the language of another. So somebody would ask for a brick, he'd get a kick. Someone would say, pass the Diet Coke, he'd give him a in the head. Imagine working without Diet Coke, it's impossible. Rashi Havaner da Bebez Dinaimlach, he consulted with his heavenly court, may in Vesanusa Yaseda, because of his great humility, a lesson to us. Hava Mida Kenegid Mida, measure for measure. Hey, Mamru, they said, Hava Nivna, let us build. Who connect them, Madad Vamar? And he measured and he said, Hava Nerda, let's go down. Benoblo Nebalbel, Nebalbel, Bilbul, let's confuse and confound. Nun mishamish b'lashanabim. The nun is plural. Ve'achreni yaseidik hey shall nerda like the hey of herda. The and and hey la yishmu zeshir levena. One asks for a brick. Ve'zeh may be tit. The other brings lime. Ve'zeh imed ola imed olav. Opetzeias mecha. The other guy takes his axe and breaks the other guy's head. Cracks his skull. That's called lack of communication. And this was Hashem's method of breaking up that great peace. And again, in our day, we saw the dissolution of the great Soviet Union in general. I'm not sure of the numbers at this point in time, but you look at the numbers of which the United Nations started with. How many countries? I think there were 60-something countries. And today there's uh, 130, 140, something like that countries. Nowadays, the world sees a country is divided into two countries, three countries, four countries, five countries. We see this with, with Czechoslovakia, and we see this with, with many, many countries. Break down. That's the experience of the Tower of Babylon because unity represents power, and disunity is divide and conquer. There's a lot more to be said, but I just want to draw a parallel uh, between then and now. No parallel is, of course, perfect. 
8, so God dispersed them from there, Alpine Colorus, all over earth. The bottom line is, is that they no longer built the city. This whole project came to a halt. I guess the bank took away their financing. God scattered them abroad in this world. Because they said, lest we be scattered. This was fulfilled. The fear of the wicked will come upon them. Al-Kain, <coughs> it is for this reason, Korah, that they renamed the name of this place, which was Shinor. They called it Bovel, Babylon. Kishon Bolal Hashem because that's where God confounded the language of all earth. Omishom, and from there, Hepitzam Hashem, God scattered them. Apnei Kolo Oretz, all over the earth. Rashi 9, Omishom, Hepitzam Lima, this teaches us, bringing down from the Gemara, that this generation, their sin was so great, they even lost their portion in the world to come. What would be more difficult transgression? The sin of the generation of the flood was a sin of robbery and decadence. Or the generation of the division of mankind was a sin of going against God. Atheism. These meaning the former, the generation of the flood, did not go against God. But these, they stretched forth their hands against God Almighty to wage war. And the generation of the flood were drowned. And the generation of the tower were not drowned. They were scattered. That doesn't make sense. I would think if you go against God, your punishment is greater. It's not so. The generation of the flood were robbers and thieves, and they hurt each other. There was strife between them, inner fighting. That's why they were destroyed. Division and strife and inner conflict is the worst curse of all. The Elu and these, they acted with unity and love between them, as evil as they were, they were devoted to each other. Shenamar, as it says, Sofo Echas, one language, in one speech, Lamarita we learn, Shasoni Amachlekes, the moral of the story is that division and discord is despised by Hashem, the God of and peace is great. So that is, in short, the story of the Tower of Babel. We now continue going through the ten generations which connect Noah to Abraham. Verse 10, Ela tell the shame. These are the children of shame. Shem ben Ma'as Shona. Shem was a hundred years old. When he fathered Arpachshad, Shnosayim Achar Hamabu, two years after the flood. So Shem was 98 during the time of the flood. There's another verse, says the Balaturim, Shnosayim Achar Harash, two years after the earthquake, which teaches us, says the Balaturim from the oral law, that during the flood period, there was also a great earthquake. In addition to flood, there was also a tremendous earthquake. Rashi, Shem Be'ma'ashon, Kishoheodes when he fathered our Pachshat, Shnosayim Achar Mabel. Now remember what we're doing here. We're going through the pertinent generations, father, son, son, connecting Noah to Avram Avinu to Abraham, our patriarch. By Chishem and Shem lived after he fathered our Pachshat. He lived another Chamesh Meyashon of 500 years. By Yedid Bonim, he had many sons, who bonim so many daughters. But that's not what we're tracking here. We're tracking the lineage. When our Pachshad was 35, and here suddenly the trend shifts, and people start having children earlier in life. He was 35 years old, and he fathered Sholach, or Shelach, by Chia Pachshad, Achredi the Shelach, Sholi Shon of Arbamia Shona, by Yeled, Bonim, or Bonesi had sons and daughters. 
Shalach Hai Shleshim Shana Shalach was thirty, by Eldis Eber, by Hi Shalach Achridis Eber, Shole Shana by Shana by Eldis Bonner Bonus, by Hi Eber, Arbao Shleshim Shana by Eldis Poleg, by Hi Eber Achridis Peleg, Shleshim Shana by Bame Shana by Eldis Bonner Bonus. So far we've traced Shame, Arpachshad, Shalach, Eber, and now we go by Hi Eber Achridis Peleg, Shleshim Shana by Shana, when he was, he lived another. 430 years, by Eliud Bonner Bonus. The next generation was Peleg. By Chi Peleg, Shleish Mishan, by Eliud Asru. By Chi Peleg, Achri Eliud Asru, Teish Hashanim, or Masayim Shana, another 209 years, by Eliud Bonner Bonus. By Chi Reu, Shtayim Shleish Mishan, by Eliud Asru. Reu was 32 when he had Srug. By Chi Reu, Achri Eliud Asru, Sheba Hashanim, or Masayim Shana, by Eliud Bonner Bonus. 207 years. By Chi Srug, Shleish Mishan, by Eliud Asru, Nachar, and Srug lived 30 years. And he had Nochor. Now we're getting to familiar territory. By Chi Srug Achri Das Nochor, Masayim Shana, by Yod Bonam Abonis. By Chi Nochor, Teisha Besim Shana, by Yod Es Torach. So Nochor now, Abraham's grandfather who had Terach, Abraham's father. By Chi Nochor, Yod Es Terach. Cha Esre Shana, Mashana, another 119 years, by Yod Bonam Abonis. By Chi Terach, now Terach lived Shivim Shana 70 years, by Yod, and he fathered, he begot. As Abram, as Nochor, as Haran. There were three brothers Abram, Nochor, and Haran. The Eile told us Terach, these are the generations of Terach. Terach, Haile Terach, fathered as Abram, as Nochor, as Haran. The Haran, Haile this late, and Haran fathered Lot. So the famous Lot, nephew of Abram, was the son of Abram's brother Haran. Now, according to the Medrash, Sora was one of the same as Yiska. We're going to soon learn about a girl, Yiska, who was also a daughter of Haran. The Medrash says that Sora and Yiska were the same. So according to this Medrash, if we accept this, which is the common accepted interpretation, that Lot was also Abraham's brother-in-law, not only his nephew, but that's in the Medrash. Ayomas Haran Apne Terach Oviv. Haran died while Terach was still alive. Beretz Meladite Bior Kazdim back in Ur many years earlier. Because we learn later that Terach left Ur, went to Haran. Haran died yet in Ur. Apne Terach Oviv, Bechaye Oviv. The Medrash Agoda, the Medrash says, as Aimer says, Shal Yudei Oviv Mace, that because of his father he died. And here we come into Rashi quoting a famous Medrash. Shekov al Terach al Avram b'nei lifnei nimroid. A little background. Terach was a great, famous, idol merchant. He manufactured and sold wholesale and retail pagan idols. Idolsareus.com. Terach was a very wealthy idol manufacturer. And he saw that his son, Abraham, Avram, was anti-idol. And once Terach went out of town, and he put Abraham in charge, and Abraham broke the idols, destroyed them, created a devastation, blamed it on the biggest idol, said he did it. And Terach said, hey, you're talking to me. And so what did Terach do? Upset at his son, he called 911. And the police came. So they arrested Abram. Al Shekit is Islamah because he broke the idols. What does Terach do? They didn't fool around back then. There was no death row. There was death. He put him in the fiery furnace. He said, into the furnace you go. Terach was the judge. He was the jury. He was the everything. Good morning. So Haran is sitting. And says to himself, huh, this is interesting. I know that pagan idols are worthless. I know Nimrod the king is a creep. I know my brother Abraham is righteous. But let's see what happens. Sometimes creeps win. If Abraham gets the better and a miracle happens and he's saved, then I will identify with him. 
I'm going to be his man. I'm going to get a button that says, I am with Abraham. But if Nimrod wins, I'm with him. He did like many politicians today do. They get polls. They follow the polls. You see who's more popular. If Nimrod is more popular, I'm with him. If Abraham is more popular, I'm with him. And a miracle happened. We know the Medrash tells us that Abraham was miraculously saved because the furnace turned into a garden. It was a gorgeous garden. And Abraham was strolling in the garden. Miracle of miracles. So when Abraham was saved, and they came to interview Haran, so they said to Haran, this was Fox News, Michel Miata, who are you with? Whose side are you on? Haran Haran said, Michel Abramani, I am with Abraham. So they said, really? Let's see how you do. So just to test him, they cast him into the Kipshin race, into the fiery furnace. And no miracle happened. But Nisra, when he got killed, he was burned. Zeu Ur caused him, this is Ur, the fire of the Shaldis. So that's the interpretation. And Lot, his son, was remain, remained an orphan, and Abraham adopted him. Zeu Ur caused him. Menachas Perish Ur, Bika, Menachem explains that Ur is a plain. Every hole, deep, cleft, valley is called Ur. 29, Abraham and Nochor, Abram and Nochor married. Shem Eishas Abram, Sorai. Abram's wife was Sorai. Shem Eishas Nochor, and Nochor's wife was Milka. Bas Horon, the daughter of Horon, Avi Milka, Avi Yiska, the father of Milka and the father of Yiska. Yiska, says Rashi, Zu Sora. Yiska is Sora. Hashem Shesochsa. Because she looked with holy inspiration. That's one reason she was called Yiska. Everyone gazed at her beauty. Dignity. Dominion. So, Akora Sora was barren. She had fertility challenges. Ain love a Lord. She had no offspring. She had no child. The wife of Sarai's son, the wife of Avram, his son, and he left with them, Meur Kazdim, Lolechas to head, Arza Canaan towards Canaan, by Yavayu, and he reached At Choron to Choron, by Yeshu Sam, and he settled in in Choron. Thirty two you the entire lifespan of Terach was Chome Shonim Masayim Shona. He lived a measly two hundred and five years. Bayomas Terach Bechoron Terach died back in Choron. Rashi wants to know Bayomas Terach Bechoron Lachriot Sarom Echoron or Bolet's Knan. You must know that this happened a long time after Abraham left in the next portion. It took another 60 years for Terach to die. Abraham was 75 years old when he left Choron. And Terach was 70 years when Abram was, mar- when Abram was born. So how old was Terach when Abram left? He was 145. He lived till 205. A lot of years. Why is the Torah telling us that Terach died? That the world should not say, like if Abraham did not respect his father, and he left him an old man, and he left. And many, many years, Abraham did not have the opportunity to perform the mitzvah. They didn't even have emails. They didn't even have phones. The fecal, therefore, the Torah tells you why Abraham did that. Because as far as the Torah is concerned, Terach was dead. What do you mean he was dead? He was alive. Because when people choose wickedness, even when they live, 
they're dead. And this is an, an important principle in Torah. A tzaddik, even after he passes on, is still living. Classic. David, Melech, Yisrael, Chai, Vikayam, King David is alive, even though physically he passed away. Avram, Yitzchak, Yaakov, Moshe, all the tzaddikim are living, even though they passed away. Rishoyim, wicked people, even when they're alive, they're dead. Says the in, Shmuel. in the Torah, there is a nun hafucha, a different type of nun, upside down or crooked. To tell you, until Abraham was born, there was the anger of Hashem. And just to point out what I have pointed out earlier, that the sixth millennium, the 6,000 years of this world follow the six days of creation, which follow the six attributes. So the first millennium corresponded with chesed, which is the attribute of kindness, free flow. There was no discipline. People lived forever and they could do anything. The second thousand years was the Millennium of Gvura, of severity, and that's where all the punishments came, and the flood, and the Tower of Babel, and so on and so forth. The third millennium is the millennium of Tiferes, of beauty, of splendor, of emes, of truth. That's the millennium in which the Torah was given, in which the Jewish people became a people. And Avram Avinu, Abraham, was born following the years of creation in the year 1948. So that when Abraham, when Avraham Avinu turned 52 years old, we crossed into the third millennium. And when he was 75 years old, in the early part of the third millennium, he left. Choron, he went, he, 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 it says, God said, told him, Lech Lecha, and go. And that's the beginning of millennium three, which is the millennium of Tiferes, an end to the anger of Hashem as expressed in the last Rashi, end of the portion of Noah.